أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا الكريم الرسول المسدد والعبد المؤيد المصطفى الأمجد أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد والآل الطاهرين الطيبين المعصومين لا سيما على سبته الأكبر رحانته الإمام المجتبى السيد صلوات الله عليه وعلى أبيه وأمه وجده وأخيه وعلى أصحاب رسول الله المنتجبين وعلى جميع أنبياء الله والمرسلين Respected brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani r-rajim, bismillahi r-rahmani r-rahim. Inna a'atainaka al-kawthar, fasalli li rabbika wanhar, inna shani'aka huwa al-abatar. Muhammad, Muhammad. We extend congratulations to our Rasul Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, to our Imam Ali alayhi salam, Fatima al-Zahra, and the Imam of our time alayhi salatu wa salam, and of course to our Imam Hassan alayhi salam on his birth, on this auspicious and beautiful occasion of his birth. Mm. In this beautiful month of Ramadan, this month of Quran, and this month of guidance, Al Imam Al Hassan alayhi salam's birth is, of course, the first birth to Ar Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's the Ahlul Bayt after Al Hijra. So it was real, beautiful, actual. Meaning for our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. And hence we began with the surah, Inna a'atayna kal kawthar. Because we know what the enemies of our Rasul said. That you have no children. What will happen to your da'wah? Your sons have passed away. And in their narrow world view, that is what they measured Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's truth by. And for them, as soon as Ar Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam passed away, it was the end. So with the birth of Imam al Hassan alayhi salam, it's a coming to fruition of this shortest surah in Al Quran. It was revealed, Inna a'atayna kal kawthar. Indeed, we have given you abundance. Of course, it refers to Hawth kawthar and to Fatima alayhi salam. But one of the first, the first fruit after Al-Hijrah was the birth of Imam Hassan alayhi salatu wassalam. It was also a way of making the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's heart happy. If we take the view that not very, very few years ago before Khadija alayhi salam passed away, Abu Talib alayhi salam passed away, it was a real deep tragedy and pain for our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. It was a difficult, these were difficult moments for him. Then Al-Hijrah took place. And here comes the birth of Imam Hassan alayhi salam. So it fills that gap in our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam's life. Therefore, that is the symbolic but also the real meaning of the birth of Imam Hassan alayhi salam. Our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is seeing Allah's promise coming through that indeed this deen will continue. And with the birth of Imam Hassan alayhi salatu was salam. So Allah's promise comes through. Before I continue, respect brothers and sisters, let me break somewhat of order the way in which we do things sequence. And yeah, we usually do it at the end, but as part of us, expressing our congratulations and our happiness with Imam Hassan alayhi salam inshallah via the agency or via the means of his 
his, 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 his grand-nephew, the son of Imam Hussein Islam, the Imam of our time, to express our congratulations to him. Let us thank those sisters who are responsible for tonight preparing this the Fatima Haider and all the other sisters and brothers who assisted her. Because this is beautiful, this is part. As I say, we usually do it at the end, but let's do it right at the beginning. Because that is also our way of expressing part. Al Imam Hassan alayhi islam accepting all that, not only our words, but the actions that was done tonight. For all those who are part of this, the writing of this beautiful birthday message, the placing of these balloons and this general atmosphere of happiness. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from you, inshallah, all your efforts. And may the Imam al Hassan alayhi salam himself receive it and all your efforts, inshallah. Hmm. 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 Al Imam Hassan alayhi salam, this Imam who was fi jami'i mawaqifihi, in all his positions in life, and all the stances that he took, he was mithalan kareeman, he was indeed a generous example, an embodiment, lil khuluq al-islami, of the ethics and the character of Islam, of who? An-Nabawi ar of his grandfather, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was an embodiment, he was a manifestation, he was the example of that arrafi of sublime status. In what? Simply there? Yes, he was that, but for what? How is that brought out in a more clear way? Fi tahammulil adha, in all the difficulties and all the hardships that were placed on him by the enemies, by those who did not believe in Allah. Wal makru and all the tested things they made him do. And in his wisdom and in his sabr carried out that fidatillah for the sake of Allah. If we want to speak about fana in a very in a very if I am to speak about my, in a very incomplete way is that Al Imam Al Hassan alayhi islam how he did how he acted that was fana fidatillah doing everything for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how wa tahalli bis sabr the sweetness of his life's manifestation in sabr al imam as sabir the imam who showed sabr into its immaculate and complete sense as sabr al jamil and this is a continuation of the Quranic values of Ya'qub alayhi salam when he said as sabr al-jameel that is what Al-Imam Hassan alayhi salatu salam did wal hilm al-kabir and indeed his great and his magnificent clemency to understand and all those acts were not simply just nice acts they were acts that he did that had meaning for the ummah of all times to come for Al-Imam al Hussein alayhi salam all the other imma would come after him and for us up till today and inshallah until qiyamah to learn these lessons of course inshallah with the coming of the imam of our time ajalallahu ta'ala faraja we will see that in its complete manifestation inshallah a rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said he looks at al-imam hassan alayhi and he says allah man ahabbani falyuhibbuha falyuhibba hadha Whoever loves me, let him love this Al-Hassan. He says, Al-Hassan al Hussein imamani qama aw qa'ida. Al-Hassan al Hussein are imams, and we'll come back to this inshallah. Whether in an immediate sense, whether they stand or they sit, was apparently during a salah. But what he means, that whatever you may think, you may see of them as passive. You may see of them as active. You may see them there explicit or implicit, but they remain imams. In other words, they remain beacons of guidance and light so that if you hold on to them, even if it seems that they are not there immediately in the arena, even if it seems that they are not occupying office, they are there as imams. So this is both guidance from the Prophet, but it's also a warning. It's also an advice that hold 
unto them Allahumma inni uhibbuhu fa ahibba Ar Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam makes a dua he says oh Allah I love him fa ahibba love him too oh Allah wa ahibba man yuhibbu and love the one who loves Al Hasan Ali Imam Al Sajjad alayhi salam says Inna al Hasana kana a'bad al nas fi zamanihi wa azhadahum wa arfa'ahum Ali Imam Zain al Abidin his nephew says Al Hasan Ali Imam Hasan is the most a'bad the most complete servant of Allah fi zamanihi of his time wa azhadahum and most in his humility and his asceticism wa arfa'ahum and most sublime yesterday maulana talked about what abd what is ubudiyah now we understand it's not just servant abd it is the complete is the highest stage of raising as al imam khomeini said kafa it is enough to serve al imam ali alayhi salam he's abdullah al imam al hasan is the abd of allah in its highest sublime most complete sense he is the imam a'bad al nas the person who is closest to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the person who best and in his zaman in his time as the imam so it is important that we reflect and listen more about ubudiyah what it means that al imam has al imam al hasan alayhi salam was abd inshallah that will follow up further because now we understand better the meaning of abd the significance of abd what is mean to be abd and not simply allah speaks of all his anbiya as abd al imam al hasan alayhi salam is the imam is that so respected brothers and sisters but when rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says all these words he says i love him he says allah he says firstly i love al hasan and he says to those who say they love me then love him man ahabbani let us put it in parenthesis and say the prophet is saying who claims he love me love him in other words it's is one can say i love a rasul but that love will only be authenticated by we loving al hasan that's number one. in that very immediate sense allahumma inni uhibbu oh allah i love him then love the one and love him oh allah and love the one who loves him so what this comes to is that in the more now it comes to the, the general sense the sense in life that because al hasan will provide guidance at a time when things are murky when the atmosphere has been polluted when it appears that they that this is the path to follow and it's not the path to follow so now it goes over from rasul loving him as a grandfather yes absolutely but now to the guidance of the ummah so love here then takes on after takes on that broader political sense and i'm just using this word to mean the public in other words the rasul is not putting it in a narrow parochial way yes it's important that he starts in his relationship with his grandson that's true but then it goes broader because now it carries political significance and meaning for us there in his guidance there in is the path to follow if you love me you must follow this grandson of mine if you love him if you love me and you say you are sincere to me that is authenticated through you following al hasan in other words if you do not do that if we see there's just a nicety just a formality the prophet said yeah, i love him no that is that is yes that is necessary that is important but that is just the beginning point you cannot suffice with that al hasan will then give us al imam al hasan alayhi salam will give us the guidance at the time when there's no guidance when there's a pseudo guidance when there are those who claim they are following ar rasul if you really want guidance if you really say you love ar rasul kul in kuntum tuhibbunani fat kul in kuntum tuhibbun allah fattabi'uni in quran say if you love allah if you claim you love allah fattabi'uni then follow me yuhibbukum allah allah will love you that is the quran this hadith of ar rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wasallam 
It says, it then goes further. Yes, but our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, inna ka mayyitun wa inna mayyitun, that you are going to pass away, O Muhammad. But your deen is living on. This deen is living on for always. How do we ensure that we follow that deen as our Rasul brought it? Because imama does not end. Inni ja'iluka lin nasi imama. That ja'il, it's an active participle. At tajaddud, it continues. An nubuwa came to an end. Our Rasul Muhammad is khatamul anbiya, khatamul rusul. There's no nabi to come, there's no rasul. But imama and leadership, and we'll come back to that, continues. So, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ If you say you love Allah, فَاتَّبِعُونِي Follow me, our Rasul. But our Rasul had then passed away. So the imams and Yitru Hassan, now we understand that this hadith is linked to this Quranic ayah. فَاتَّبِعُونِي Follow. فَاتَّبِعُوا Ittama'a means very, very closely. Don't follow your own step. Take the leadership of this imam. Take the guidance. Fattabi'uni. So now, man yuhibbuni, man ahabban, whoever loves me, Rasul, fal yuhibb hadha, then let him love al-Hassan. In other words, love, yes, is a personal, but follow him. Following what he's saying and what he's doing. And it may be that things he the things that you will be doing or the steps or the decision you will be taking may not appeal to me immediately. It may not appeal to me. It may go against my own political sensibilities, my own political understandings. But it is exactly here at this point that I have to be careful. Because our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made it clear. And therefore this dua to come back to you says, Allahumma inni uhibbu, I love him, inni, the Prophet emphasizes this, inni, indeed I love him. We know the Prophet loved Al-Hassan al Hussein. Why does he emphasize it? It is a message for us. It's not just the personal. فَأَحِبَّهُ وَأَحِبَّنْ Allah Love the one who loves him. Love the one who follows Al-Hassan, who does what the Imam of his time says. Because Al-Hassan was the Imam, and who are the Imams? Quran says in Surah Al-Anbiya, وَجَعَلْنَا مَا إِمَّةَ يَهَدُونَ بِأَمْرِنَا وَأُوحَيْنَا إِلَيْهِمْ فِعْلَ الْخَيْرَاتِ وَإِقَامَ الصَّلَاةِ وَإِتَاءَ الزَّكَاةِ وَكَانُوا لَنَا عَابِدِينَ وَجَعَلْنَا We made them imams. Who? Of course, the Anbiya. But after Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the imams, بِأَمْرِنَا By our decree, Allah's decree, يَهَدُونَ this is not just an imam. Yes, this is imam al-amma. But how do we know? What are the conditions? Not just any imam, because there are bad imams, as the Quran tells us. Now we're speaking about the imams of guidance. Yahaduna, they guide. They guide. Bi amrina, by our decree. Wa ohayna, and we reveal to them fi'al al khayrat, that they do good. That because they are who they are, that good manifests on their hands, in their words, in what they say, in what they do, in what they don't do. Because what they don't do, there is guidance and action. There's action in not doing something. In other words, you must act accordingly. Wa salah and to establish salah. Not just salah as we make it, of course. Iqama salah to establish salah in its true manifestation. Wa ita az zakan to give zakah. Wa kanu lana abidin. And again, they were abd. See, we come back to this word abd, or this notion, or this concept, or this teaching of abd. It's not just a light word. Yes, some people just say abd, doing, but they were abidin. The highest manifestation, the closest, the highest stages was said to us yesterday. Because to understand this, so the Quran is outlining to us what are the conditions, what are the requisites of this, of being imam? What is it that they used to do? They are bidin. The Quran outlines that clearly. And if we want and we need to follow, we see it clearly only in their seer, in their way of lives, in their biographies, as we read. Because opposite to that, in Surah Al Qasas is who? Those who are misguided. We made some of them imams who invite to Jahannam. Because they were imams who competed to Imam Al Hassan. There was a person who claimed imama, but who are they? They are the ones who lead us to Jahannam. And this calls for us 
to alert. Al Imam Al Hassan alayhi salam, because he's the Imam, that is why too we should reflect on his life. Some of the painful decisions, if you want, they call it a bitter pill that he to swallow. And sometimes it happens that we don't always understand. If we think, we know, and that happens to us as human beings, isn't it? We take a particular decision, we say that no, this doesn't sound right to us. Yes, that happens. But that is precisely at that moment which we should not become weak. Precisely at this moment that we understand that if we accept him as the Imam of our time, and the ones who guide us, that we've got to be at least a bit patient. And it's precisely at the moment that we want to react. And yes, it's, it's, it's almost spontaneous that, listen, but this is not right. Sure, it may come there in our heads, but it's precisely the time that we just have to be a little bit more patient. It's not an easy task. I'll come back to that. Al-Imam al-Hassan was the imam. That any decision he took, as the decision with Muawiyah, and I'll come back, it was because he understood. Let me say, from this respect, brothers and sisters, we can clearly understand our Rasul's words. We can understand what he said about Hassan as both love and tragedy. Love, of course, deep-seated love for the, of the, from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But all sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. But also the unfolding of tragedy in the years that would follow. That starts immediately after our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam's passing away. And would continue for many centuries. And that is the continuous struggle. As both love and tragedy. But within that niche, that love that is always there. And that tragedy that in those words that, that they contain, it also exposes the farce, the political farce, you know, when we are, wool is pulled over our eyes. And this is what happens continuously. Al Imam al Hassan alayhi salam is the patient one who reads life very, very carefully, who understands the unfolding events, who makes the necessary, though. Many don't understand it because he's surrounded by power among us and people and, and, and ignorant followers who don't understand. For those whom the, this ephemeral world and its glittering that appears to be gold, as they say, all that glitters is not, are not, all that glitters are not gold. But for some people it appears like this. This imam has to be patient, has to swallow that bitter pill so that beauty can manifest and that those who are patient will see the beauty even through the difficulty. This imam is never interested in power, as indeed all the imam were not ever interested in power. Power was never part of their vocabulary, not of the existential or the political or even their personal vocabulary. We know what all the imams said. Look at Al-Imam Zain al-Abidin alayhi salam. Look at Mawla, our Imam Ali alayhi salatu wasalam. The aim was always in the service of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Power for them, taking this temporal power, is a spin-off perhaps. They understand is to serve the deen and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To be Abdullah. That is what they understand. They are not those who see truth and who conflate and who confuse truth with power. They understand for them, al-mulk is not an issue and the power and therefore al-mulk is not akim. Because power is blind. People who need power can kill their own fathers and their own children if they want power. The Imams, alayhi muslam, al Imam Hassan, alayhi islam, therefore he says to Muawiyah if we want. And it's a difficult point. Even for many Shia, even up till today, people argue, did Imam Ali alayhi islam and Imam Hassan alayhi salatu islam really give that to Muawiyah? It was the necessary, difficult step to take, to expose the false, to expose the farce, but also for beauty to emanate. So that is what Imam Hassan alayhi salatu islam does. Yes, Muawiyah, you want power? You want power? 
Just know that power, however strong it appears, will never undo truth, will never undo righteousness. If you think, well, Fir'aun had more power than you, well, then the empires of Ad and Thamud had more power than you. And the Quran tells us this repeatedly. In the time of our Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, the Quran says to Quraysh, there were people, civilizations, much more powerful than you. So Imam al-Hassan alayhi salam takes that step. Muawiyah, you must know, you may take political power, but you will not take truth. You will not contaminate truth. You will not compromise truth. And, but this distortion carries in on even after his lifetime. So we hear later riwayah, what is called a hadith, comes about on the tongue of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam purportedly. Ibn hadha sayyidun wa la'alla allaha ay yusliha bayna fi'atayni min al-muslimin. We are told. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, my son this al-Hassan is a sayyid. And we'll see later that al-Imam al-Hassan alayhi sallam had many titles. But one of his main titles, according to some scholars, is as Sayyid. And we'll see why. It may be that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cause at his hand reconciliation between two groups of the Muslim Ummah. The problem with this riwayah, with the saying, lies not in what it says, but what it does not say, insofar as it appears to equate the two sides. It says you will create reconciliation between two parties without qualifying that the one party was baghi, was completely wrong. Because it's a later that tries to sanitize, that tries to represent one side that was completely wrong, that had distorted the message of Islam at the hands of Muawiyah and the aristocracy. It tries to present him as just an okay guy, so neutral. Like today often, you know, when they speak about Palestine and the Zionist enemy, the Israeli enemy, they say the two sides have clashed. Exactly. We see this exercise. It's not a new one. So it presents them almost as equal by neutral, by not saying that what a Rasul had actually said is that, yes, you will try to bring out reconciliation among the Ummah by taking into account that this false side, this very wrong side, has got the power. Now, Imam al-Hassan alayhi salam had the wisdom to say that for now, we can't fight. For now, we have to let them have the power so that for the greater good of the ummah. Let's go to Al-Quran al-Kareem to correct and abrogate this distortion. Quran says, وَإِن طَائِفَتَانِ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ اقْتَتَلُوا فَأَصْلِحُوا بَيْنَهُمَا فَإِمْ بَغَتْ إِحْدَاهُمَا the Quran says, yes, when two parties among the believers have a dispute and they fight, create reconciliation between them. Does it stop there? No, he says, but then one of them transgress on the other. Then fight against the one who is the transgressor. That is what is correct. That is how we must understand that hadith. But even this incomplete riwayah, it retains the responsibility and gift of Sayyid. Because it's inna bna hadha Sayyid. Indeed, this son of mine is a Sayyid. In other words, he's giving you clear existential and political guidance. Respected brothers and sisters, our world today, this love for Al-Imam Al-Hassan, this tragedy that unfolded around his life and the fast that was imposed, it speaks to the perennial, all these things speak to the perennial question of leadership in a world that is bereft of it, that is stumbling along, that is clutching onto straws and making alliances today with a shaitan and the allies and the friends of shaitan. But the world and the world often that is looking on with one eye or a jaun or jaundiced eyes, this al-imam al-sabir, had to do the painful to expose, to clarify, to expose, and to clarify. But that even we did not immediately grasp. Removing weeds and planting a seed will not immediately be followed by fruits and flowers blossoming, but it will happen. Allah has promised us 
Our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam in the most difficult moments after the passing of Khadija alayhi wa sallam and Abu Talib alayhi wa sallam, he had difficult moments. It is called the year of the sorrow. But a few years later, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of course, Allah was always there to comfort him, but with the birth of Imam Hassan alayhi wa sallam. So we should always be seeing the births of the Imams always in our lives. Of course, they're not going to be reborn in that sense. Of course, but when we, and that is why it's important that we commemorate their birthdays. Because commemorating their birthdays is giving us hope, is giving us guidance, is giving us assurance that we should, we should carry on. Even what appears to be passive resistance, the Imam teaches us, even what appears to be passive resistance, it's nevertheless resistance and beautiful resistance the lessons that are there. And one of the things the Imam does is through du'as. He makes a du'a and he's to call on this du'a. And right now Muawiyah has got power and those are in power. It's okay. They may have power, but they don't have control over our minds. They don't have control over our deen, but we need to understand. So he makes this du'a, he says, and it's very important to see the words that he choose. Not just du'a, we can, we can, of course, we make du'a, but the Imam doesn't just choose any words, very specific words that speak to the reality. Allahumma ya man ja'ala bayna al-bahrayn hajizan wa barzakha. Oh Allah, the one who makes between the two waters. What has the waters got to do with this? If you want, immediately ask. A hajiz, a barrier, and a barzakh. Wa hajram mahjura, and a stone that is indeed firmly stone. Ya the quwwati was sultan. Oh Allah, you are the possessor of, of strength and authority. Ya Ali al makan. You are the one who is sublime in status. Kaifa akhafu anta amali. How can I fear when you are my hope, Allah? It's a difficult moment for Imam Hassan alayhi salatu wa salam. He says, Kaifa akhaf. Kaifa al udam wa alayka mutakili. How can I feel that I'm oppressed and, you know, done away, done with? Wa but my dependence is on you. min a'adaika bisitrik. Allah, cover me from your enemies, those who have taken power, with your sitr, with your cover. Wa adhirni ala a'adaika bi amrik. Let me stand above your enemies, bi amrik through your decree. Wa ayidni bi nasrik. Assist me with your help. Ilayka alja'u wa nahwika al-multaja. I take my refuge and sanctuary in you. Fajalli min amri faraja. Let this, my, what I'm experiencing now, min amri farajan, victory and succor and relief, wa makhraja and a way out. Ya kafi ahla al harami. Oh, you Allah. Then he takes us back to where? Takes back into history through this dua. Ya kafi ahl al haram. You Allah gave victory to the people of the haram of Makkah, min ashab al fil, from the people of the ele elephants. Remember when Abraham attacked? Makkah was completely undefended, if you want, but Allah gave victory. Al Imam al Khomeini, we know in 1980, when the Americans were going to attack Iran, if in that day there was not the direct intervention of Allah, however materials want to read it, they could have defeated if you won the Islamic Revolution. They were not ready. But what happened? What happened? That is why when they told Ali Imam al Khomeini of that operation of Tabas on the 25th of April, 1980, that failed, what did Imam al Khomeini say? We are great. The Islamic Revolution is great. The first response was, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alam tara kayfa fa'ala rabbuka bi ashabil fil. He brought the Quran alive. He said, did you not see how your Lord dealt with the companions of the elephants? The Americans didn't come with elephants, of course. They came with much, much more powerful things than elephants. But Allah destroyed. Al-Imam Hassan, he says, Ya Allah, wa mursil alayhim tayran ababil. He makes this dua so that we can understand that Muawi was also not, it, it was a very, very difficult time. Towards the end, respected brothers and sisters, and he's a teacher too. One of the great scholars regarded in, uh, uh, of the Tabi'een, al Hasan al-Basri. He comes to the Imam, he says, Amma ba'd, he says to the Imam, 
he, he, he speaks to the Imam, he says to him, Katabtu ilayka, I wrote to Yabana Rasulullah in the ikhtilafina, because we have a difference of opinion, we have a dispute. Fil qadr, on this whole notion of qadr wal qada. Wahiratina fil istata'a. And we are perplexed about what is human ability all about. Again, what, what is the significance of this? It was it were the Umayyads, this Muawiyah, who came with this notion that God does everything and human beings have no ability. Why? So they could justify both his rule, his usurpation of power, as well, as well as saying that human beings can do nothing. So that when he appointed Yazid, what did he say? What did he say? He says, Inna amra Yazid, qada umna al qada, laysa lil khalqi khiyaratun fi amrihim. That this appointment of Yazid, Allah has decreed that Yazid must be the ruler after me. Allah has decreed. And you people have no say. So Hassan al Basri is asking this very, very important question. He says, Then inform me, please, alayhi ra'yak, your opinion, wa ara abaika, and the opinion of your fathers. Of course, going Ali, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. He's asking because therein lies guidance. And later on, in fact, Al-Hasan al-Basri wrote an epistle where he completely dispels. And of course, we're not going to the deep discussion of Qadr and Qadr. But what is happening here is that we expel that Qadr and Qadr must be politically abused by those who want power. And that Al-Imam Hassan made clear. And therefore, Al-Hasan al-Basri could, could later write, after the passing of Imam Hassan alayhi salatu wasalam, he could write to Abdul Malik and say to him that yes, your actions, you are responsible for it, lest those in power, by claiming that human beings have no right, they can just do what they like. So we see in that, respected brothers and sisters, let me end up saying that we as a fellowship we is following our imams, following the Ahlul Bayt, alayhi salatu wasalam, as we were commanded by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And indeed, as intellect demands, if we really sit and reflect, we have to reflect about life all the time, to observe in our sincerity to Allah, insha'Allah, bin niyatin sadiqa, muqulubin tahira, with sincere intentions and pure hearts, insha'Allah. It is a difficult exercise. Indeed, it's a difficult exercise. In a world where things are always murky, it is, it, is, it is so easy to succumb to deception. But, inshallah, if we hold on to that light, where the Prophet said, I leave to you two things. And in Imam Hassan alayhi salatu wasalam's birthday that we celebrate today indeed, therein lies our perpetual hope, never to give up. So as we celebrate, we ask Allah that he sees all the celebrations in the world for his birthday, inshallah, and accept everyone so that we can continue with that. Tonight again, and let me, we read Dua Mujir. That is exactly what it is. Dua Mujir. See, all them is that asking Allah's protection to know how to function in this world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from us all, inshallah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.